All right, here we go. We're going live. Once again, thank you so much for joining me live here in the artist studio. This is Jose Trujillo, the world's greatest living artist. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to do a... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to take. I'm trying to make this one short. That's why I'm using small paintings on this ones, because my my phone sometimes likes to be like. I gotta get a new phone because sometimes it's like, you know what, dude? Uh, I'm gonna decide to cut the video because I'm, you know, the phone's heating up or something. I don't know. I think I need to get a new phone. I I I give this phone uh, a lot of uh, a lot of pressure. <laughs> it's going to be a painting of, uh, this is inspired by the Impressionists very much. I've been looking at the works of, of, uh, of uh, Renoir and uh, Manet and Mrs. Uh, Berth Morisot, or Marisot, however you, you know, uh, you pronounce that. So, it's going to be a glass with roses, okay? Very much, very much inspired by the Impressionist work. And also, um, you know what? Let's, uh, yeah, that's perfect. Because I'm going to center that, but I'm not going to center the rose. The rose will not be centered. So I, it's okay that I kind of center the glass, okay? But I will, I refuse to center the rose in order to create some, uh, some sort of, uh, Je ne sais quoi. Okay. And again, there is no right way or wrong way of doing it. You can and should experiment with it. Okay. Now, if the if the flowers are here, that means that the stems most more likely will be juxtaposed, right? They'll be on the opposite side. If the, the flower is here, then it doesn't matter if your stem is like uh, whatever but it will be over here in order to recline itself, right? So, very importante. I mean, if you want to create some sort of uh, illusion of reality. You know, I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Welcome to the, to the art session. Thank you so much for, for joining. And for this, I will be using... Uh, a little mixture of cadmium red and magenta for the flowers, okay? Cadmium red magenta. So I'm trying to create the... I'm, I'm trying to capture little bits of, of uh, as, as I mentioned before, like Monet used to say, capture um, little patches, right? He used to call them little patches. Uh, it, it's, it's, it becomes a little bit more difficult if you just want to do the whole thing and the whole thing and the whole thing because you, you're trying to cut steps. But if you learn how to continually get back, get back to the, to the, to, to the um, palette where the, where the paint is, then you won't have that trouble that much, you know. I hope I made some sense there. The, the, the trouble is that we want to cut steps. And even if you're doing abstract work, it's very difficult to cut steps. You don't want to cut steps. You want to render um, the, the color or whatever you, you are trying to render. In this case, it's movement and both color and movement. But I'm not so uh, in tune with with uh, the you know the, the, the right shade or the um, the detail, right? It's not my it's not my cup of tea. Um, but for some artists, it is. It's pretty cool. So it's basically a, a simple approach, right? You're, you're, you're not trying to complicate it. 
you're trying to say, oh, there's there's dark green there. Let's put dark green. That looks kind of like you know there's something happening there, uh, but it's but it's light, and I don't know. I can't really you know because you're 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 essentially just capturing um, the movement and the impression of it, you know. And then and then you start you know you start gravitating towards your own your own je ne sais quoi, as I like to call it. That's when uh, maturity starts coming in, and you start doing things that make no sense, but they do make sense. <laughs> I guess they make no sense to other people. Uh, maybe they do. I, I, I think at a, at, a, at a deeper level, they do make sense to other people. But it, it doesn't necessarily look, because you're not aiming at that level of realism. You're aiming at... Uh, the feeling of it. What does it feel like when I look at that? Not, not what does it look like. I know what it looks like. I already know what it looks like when I look at a glass with, with, um, with, with flowers, right? I already know what that looks like. My interest is what does it feel like? And, and am I able to save, in, to put it that way, to save some of the realism in there, but also express something beyond what it looks like. That's really the aim of it, and 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 it becomes more difficult the more you try to focus on on uh, on the realism of it and the aesthetic. Right? It becomes a little bit more difficult because because now you're playing matching game. You know, now you're now you're trying to match. You're like, oh, where's the, you know, where's the light there? Is the light really there? Is it not, you know? And now you're, 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 you pigeonhole yourself, to put it in a, that way, right? Here, I'm, I'm, I'm only interested in, in, uh, in the feeling. The feeling is what matters to me most here, and to many artists too. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What is the... the, the, the that's why they call it the impression, no? But, but this is a, a bit beyond impressionism. It's not so much... I guess it would be post-impressionist or, or even uh, abstract, no? Fauvist type. Um, but I am very much influenced by these guys. But there's, no, there's, no, there's no use in, in trying to paint like Monet, right? For me, there's no use. There was already Monet. I love their approach to uh, the directness of the approach. And I think that some of them have had different, you know, things to offer. For example, um, Gauran had a whole different thing to offer than what Cezanne did or, or Monet or, you know. The early Impressionists were still very realist, in a sense. They were kind of just getting out of the cocoon. You know. That's my opinion anyways. I don't know if, if, I, if it's really what it is. Who knows, right? It really is what it is. But that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in... in they change the brush. Sometimes I get asked if I change the brush. I already changed the brush right now. It's just, I'm too quick. I'm too fast. <laughs> it doesn't feel that way. Now I like to, as impressionist, I like to get, uh, to keep it going around. The color that I have from here kind of uh, tint my, my, my other color with it to, to uh, place it in there. It creates a, uh, the, the eye wants to close it. The eye wants to finish it. The eye is very smart, as I mentioned before. The eye wants to finish it. And so I, I give it some information, not all of it, but some of it. And part of that is also giving it some information from other parts of the painting. For example, this right here, this color right here, I might even give it some information right here on the rose. Because I'm trying to tie it, I'm trying to, 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 to bring it around. It's a little thing that I like to do. I saw how the Impressionists did that. And at first I didn't understand it. I just thought they were trying to be cool. But after painting for some years, I realized uh, what they were doing. 
You know, it was experiential. I couldn't. If you would have told me, I wouldn't understand it. I would understand uh, theoretically, but I would have never really understood it in a deeper level. So at this point, remember, there's two things, right? Usually, depending on on the surface or whatever, we have reflection, right? Which would be this. What I'm doing here. Right. We have reflection. If the surface can reflect that. Sorolla was very good at doing that. The painter, the Spanish painter, he, he, he knew how to express reflection and shadow. It's a, it's, it's a, it gets missed a lot in, in artwork. So that's reflection. I'm going to make it simple so that you see what I'm talking about. And this will be shadow. Okay. There's a difference, and it gets missed a lot. I know, uh, especially beginners, we miss it a lot, and, and uh, intermediate arts artists also tend to miss that. We either focus too much on shadow, or we focus too much on reflection, but we kind of miss that there exists those two elements in most cases. Uh, a really good example of that, as I mentioned, is Sorolla. Try to look at Sorolla as a a painting of it by the sea, and also uh, Lucian Freud, the, the, the British portrait painter, uh, you will see a lot of that in his portraits, that there, that there is shadow and there is reflection, you know, in, in the skin tone. Monet knew how to do that a lot too. We, we, when we look at the paintings by Monet, we think, oh, wow, but, but he really he's just he's playing with reflection and shadow. Many of the times, in my opinion, anyways. It's beautiful, expressed also in the boating party by, uh, by Renoir. That cat knew how to do that too really well. Okay, guys, this is it. This is where I get off. <laughs> that was quick, right? <laughs> I'm so glad that uh, you guys got to join me. And this awesomeness, uh, let me go ahead and sign this because if I sign it, then people will know, well, this cat did it. You will find this uh, artwork on eBay. I have an option on eBay. There's my plug. <laughs> It'll be on eBay and go check it out. You know, I, I'm going to be auctioning this. The auctions will start at 99 cents. And sometimes, believe it or not, people do win in for very low. So I'm just glad to share my work. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.